All right, let's get started. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, everyone to the Sustainable Minds uh, Training Cloud Software System for a Greener Product Innovation, How to Operationalize Environmental Performance in Your Company or Industry. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Jupe Meyer and I'm the LCA Technical Expert at Sustainable Minds. Uh, I'm a chemist and life cycle assessment expert by training and I've spent most of my career in product development, measuring environmental performance and helping with standardization efforts to create a level playing field about environmental performance metrics within ISO, ASTM and the US Green Building Council. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, a few notes on this webinar before I get started with the content. To keep things moving and to avoid confusion, uh, we've muted all your microphones and they will remain muted throughout the webinar. Now, if you do have a question, then please don't hesitate to send it to us. Uh, there's a question step um, and you can send a question to staff during the presentation. Uh, we're capturing all your questions and uh, we'll try to address them uh, once they come up, if they're relevant. Uh, or we'll try to address them uh, during the Q&A at the end of this webinar, uh, or we'll follow up as needed uh, if we run out of time afterwards. And for your information, we are recording this webinar for our future availability, so in a few weeks uh, you'll see this webinar online on our website. So um, 60 minutes is a short time to really get into depth with uh, all the topics that we could be covering today. So we'll try to lay down the fundamentals uh, of some of the content that we offer uh, and talk to you about our company, uh, but spend most of my time on showing you um, uh, examples of companies that are using our service offerings and software and see how they utilize it in, in, in their environment and in their products and their projects. Um, we'll be spending uh, some time on some theory, a short introduction on our company. Uh, we'll be talking about eco-design strategies uh, strategies that are people using that people are using to green their products and go over some life cycle assessment LCA basics and quantifying environmental performance. We'll spend a little time on how companies are operationalizing environmental performance and where we feel sustainable minds fits in. And then we spend most of the time on actually using sustainable minds. So we show you uh, uh, several customer success stories ranging from very simple projects to very uh, elaborate and complex projects. Um, and then we'll go into the software itself. We'll be modeling our first project together uh, and I'm going to show you a uh, pre-populated project to get familiar with and the environment but also looking at results and what you can learn from using sustainable minds. Like I said, we'll end with a Q&A. Now, I will be going through the slides quite quickly, so I spend most of my time uh, with the demos and the software. Um, if you have specific questions, then please uh, chat them or email us directly. And that's what uh, you see in the following slide. We do want to meet your expectations, so uh, uh, you had a reason to show up here. So if there are questions uh, pertaining to your business case uh, that you want to share with the audience and ask to address, then uh, please send them to us and uh, we'll, we'll try to address them uh, to the best of our abilities. So with that said, uh, what better way to start uh, with spending a, a little time on the mission that we have here at Sustainable Minds. What we want to do is help you and your organization, whether that's product development, design and manufacturing, into getting a handle on how to integrate environmental performance measurement and metrics uh, during your workflow, your process and how you bring products and service to market. So it really comes down to operationalizing environmental performance into mainstream product development and manufacturing. Um, what we do at Sustainable Alliance, we marry uh, eco-design strategies, uh, eco-design philosophy, so generating new ideas and true innovation um, with LCA, life cycle assessment, a way to provide metrics and measurements uh, towards environmental performance measurements. Now the idea is if you combine those two, and you do that uh, repeatedly throughout your design process or your manufacturing, you get to truly green the products. You know, that way we want to empower you as an organization to operationalize a greener product design. Now to give an idea of uh, what customers are working with Sustainable Minds and who we are actively engaging with, on the left you see a pretty long list of uh, manufacturers, um, very dedicated uh, uh, people and teams, uh, that express 
uh, wishes to uh, get a software tool that they can use very early on uh, during the design stage, use it for benchmarking their existing projects and products, uh, looking at new product innovation directions, uh, and trying to integrate uh, very early on environmental decision making into their workflow and process. And I'm sure you can recognize some of the companies here. On the right you see several educational facilities. Uh, a pretty long list of educational facilities is working uh, with our software and we're, we're proud to, to see that uh, over 170 colleges worldwide, colleges and universities, are actively using sustainable minds in their curriculum. And it's so important because they're educating the designers of the future uh, that will be designing the things that we live in and the things that we use uh, and consume. Now, talking about um, uh, consumer products, we work with a lot of uh, uh, product consultancies as well that are trying to integrate sustainability performance metrics into their design when they're working for their respective clients. Um, you see here are several names, and one of them, uh, uh, Bressler Group, was with us just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, they described their design process very uh, thoroughly. Um, they've been using sustainable lines for two and a half years. We did a similar webinar with Fred Sparks, and then we're going to be repeating them uh, over time, uh, and those will also become available online in just a matter of a few weeks. I recommend you check that out if you want to see uh, a company talking about uh, how to we're seeing that environmental performance criteria uh, are not just fashion. There are real business drivers and there's real market demand to start integrating uh, this type of science and knowledge um, you know, with uh, amended processes, uh, maybe some new tools um, uh, into your uh, product portfolio and how you develop new projects. So it's becoming a new criteria for product development. Um, and there are all kinds of reasons. I'm sure you can recognize some of them here. Uh, some companies start this because they run into issues with resource management. Uh, they want to know what's actually in their products. Um, think of the electronics markets and the regulation from Europe and how it transformed uh, the global market uh, doing just that. Um, innovation, you see it, uh, Herman Miller, Cradle to Cradle Chair, uh, and how much positive marketing they got from that. Uh, and put a new product in the marketplace that is recognized by everybody who's been in a, in, in a green office. Uh, so a fantastic proposition there. And the, we're seeing more and more case studies of companies that if they turn to sustainability and environmental performance as an innovation driver, uh, it doesn't only make a product greener. Uh, we usually see that it also lowers cost uh, and in the end can increase revenue. And we see companies that make this a goal that achieve competitive advantage in the, in the markets there place because there's an audience for it. Now, some of that requires sometimes new knowledge, tailoring of your processes, working with uh, different new tools. And that's exactly where sustainable minds come in. Come in. Uh, we want to help you uh, uh, with all that. And today we're showing you the tool, but we have uh, an elaborate service offering to help you set up your internal processes and, and train your team in about performance uh, metrics. Now, the basic premise is that if you want to put a product in the market that you uh, want to quantify as uh, an environmental sustainable design, then you have to look at the full product life cycle. So what you see here is a representation of a life cycle, and I'm sure you've seen them before. Um, but when you're in the manufacturing, it's not just about the manufacturing and bringing the pieces together. Um, it's about redefining responsibility uh, of putting a product on the market that doesn't pose a problem for end of life or that can be recycled, or is uh, efficient during the use phase, or is extracted uh, from, from Mother Nature from the earth in a responsible way. Now, how do you organize that? What we at Sustainable Minds want to do is make sure that you can link up all these different life cycles into your screening LCA tool so you know what really matters, so you know what you need to focus on for your specific product or service offer. Now, when should you do this? Um, um, when and why to implement these strategies into your product development or manufacturing. Now what you see in the top graph, which is adapted from the mechanical design process, it shows that nearly 75% of a product's manufacturing cost is committed by the end of the concept phase. Now when you look at the lower graph, it follows that the environmental performance 
is also locked in early in the development process. Now that may sound like an exaggeration, but when you think about it, when entering detailed designs, teams have a pretty good idea what the product looks like. You've decided on the main materials, what technology is inside, the size, the use, the function, the performance specifications. Marketing has already identified the goal user, size of the market. Now, unless teams go back to earlier phases, there are few big changes available that will drastically impact manufacturing or environmental performance. Um, so while the system may be supply chain issue, it's ultimately product development teams that set it all in motion. And they do it very early, even before the first CAD model is started. So what tools, what knowledge can you bring to that stage uh, where you can really actually make decisions that, uh, that matter for environment uh, and not just do the assessment at the end when you're done with your design, when everything is locked in and you can't change anything anymore. You have to learn from it, uh, but you lose your degree of freedom of making changes. So before we jump into the, the use cases and the software, um, I'm going to start uh, by going through some strategies on how a designer, engineer, manufacturer, manager, executive could find points of entry to green products and services. So let's talk a little bit about eco-design and then how to quantify environmental performance. So the framework that we use in Sustainable Minds is based on uh, a life cycle wheel, which you see on the right. You see the different stages of the life cycle again. And, uh, after use, you see that the product can be landfilled, recycled, components can be reused, maybe the product can be reused, allowing different uh, feedbacks and loops into the new product's life. What you see on the left is what we call the eco-design strategy wheel. When it shows strategies um, uh, summarized here in main headers that basically um, stick to all the different life cycle phases. So when you're still designing, you can focus on innovation. When you have selected your materials, you can look at low impact materials. Um, and so on and so on uh, through optimized end of life. Um, the one that I usually like to talk about a lot and is very inspiring for me is to talk about optimized lifetime. And lifespan and lifetime and service life of, uh, of a product is usually very difficult to, uh, to assess. Uh, but there are also products where optimized lifetime sometimes is uh, different for the different parts. Think of your desk, um, the frame uh, that your tabletop is lying on. Uh, probably will last, outlast the tabletop itself. Um, so, so that's a product where if you can reuse, reutilize the components of the frame, um, then the re then the write-off of all the investments in there uh, uh, can go to different tabletops and and a longer use of uh, office space. Think of optimized lifetime for a disposable cup. Um, it should last for about an hour. That's an interesting brain position in there. Now, when we expand on these and uh, uh, we look a bit more closely on these different uh, seven topics. There's a wealth of eco-design strategies that you can apply within these different chapters and life cycle stages. Now, it does not mean that all strategies are relevant to your project, but it shows strategies that have worked for others and they may invite you to rethink your project. Now, when you sign up for a subscription at Sustainable Minds, you know, one part of our service offering is what we call the Learning Center. And the learning center in the software provides a wealth of details around these strategies. So rather than going to go through all of these strategies here, I suggest everyone to check out the learning center for more information. Now, one exercise that you can do um, uh, uh, is, is a very nice one. And, and uh, I recommend you do this for a product that you're making or working on I think is really green. Um, try to use all those eco design strategies and associate them with the product that you're looking at. And uh, truly greener products uh, uh, usually combine multiple strategies over multiple stages of the life cycle. And you see here the, the cradle cradle chair on the left again. It's not difficult to, to link uh, several strategies over multiple life cycle stages to this chair. And that's what you want to be doing in Sustainable Minds. When you uh, want to model the environmental performance using LCA, you want to be able to rapidly remodel uh, using different eco-design strategies to see whether those eco-design strategies are actually adding up to something that's actually green or greener. So let's talk about how we get to numbers. Um, we measure environmental performance using life cycle impact assessment. And life cycle assessment is both objective, it gives you numbers, and it tries to be as comprehensive as possible. 
So it, it, it invites you to think in, in life cycle terms, so full life cycle, and it gives you information on different endpoint uh, environmental impact categories. So it's not just carbon footprint, it's not just toxicity, it's not just resource depletion, it's all of them. Um, so you can, you can integrate it into uh, your decision making and make important trade-offs. Now at the same time we want to give you easy decision information and so we're using a, a, utilizing a single score indicator aggregating all those different impact categories. Now life cycle assessment is governed by the ISO and on the right of this slide you see the life cycle assessment framework. Uh, sustainable Mines LCA uh, just like any LCA starts with a goal and scope definition as defined by ISO where you talk about what are we comparing, what are we redesigning, what is the functional performance, uh, what questions do we want to get answered, when are we satisfied with the results, and who are the results for, what decisions do we want to be making, those types of questions, so very much scoping. If you have that um, defined, you know what data you need to satisfy the goal and scope, uh, and then the software takes care of the impact assessment, turning your numbers on materials and processes and energy into an environmental performance statement, and then you can start to look at results. And you see from the errors going back and forth between all the blocks that doing an LCA is a very iterative process. Um, uh, greener design is also a very iterative process. You want to uh, go back and redesign, add a new eco-design strategy, learn from results, what works, what's not, to finally select the one uh, that is uh, most advantageous and that you think you can, you can implement which doesn't necessarily have the lowest impact, uh, but it's the one that works the best. It usually combines a, a set of eco-design strategies. Now to look at the, at the practical uh, process flow, um, you see in the column on the left information that uh, you need to fill out while doing the Sustainable Alliance LCA. It's about materials, processes, energy use during the use phase, other consumables, transportation, end of life, so physical data. The software then takes care of turning that into an impact statement uh, and using a couple steps. And one of them is translating when you select, for example, electricity, translating that into what actual impacts are being caused by using electricity. Uh, and so how much energy, uh, which fuels, where are the fuels coming from, if you're burning, what emissions take place. So it's a very long list. It can, can contain over, it can contain thousands of impacts there. We do that for you. Then that gets translated into uh, uh, more condensed and aggregated data in, in what we call impact categories. Things like climate change, ozone layer depletion, ecotoxicity, and we're using the best science available. Um, and all of them have an impact on uh, the human uh, health or natural environment, um, etc. If you look at the uh, actual impact categories that we use in Sustainable Minds, you see them on the right here, a selection of 10 related to ecological damage, human health damage, and resource depletion. Uh, the selection has been uh, taken from the Environmental Protection Agency uh, method that they put out, Tracy, uh, um, and we turn that into a single indicator score using normalization and weighting factors that have been developed by, by NIST, uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Now, there are lots of methodologies out there, but in the end we chose some um, that come from uh, reputable, uh, reputable agencies and are applicable here in the U.S. Yeah. Now, um, the data that we use comes from trusted sources as well. We use a publicly available or license, and the license available data sets, uh, the best available, and try to make them as representative uh, for your design process. Um, so we put in the generic data and we actively work with you to make those specific uh, wherever that's necessary and needed. So we're using Econvent data, US LCI data, etc. Now we want to be um, open and transparent about how we get to our numbers. So if you're interested in the, the actual science, then I suggest you go into the Learning Center in Chapter 5. You can download the methodology report. It's out there. It's been reviewed by um, Rita Schenk, the founder and chair lady of the American Center for Life Cycle Assessment, uh, and Tom Gloria, renowned LCA expert. And we're, we're very proud of their recommendations. Uh, they were glad to see our methodology being published and the use that we have for a screening LCA. Um, very innovative um, and, 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 and thorough and transparent. So we're ISO 4040 compliant. Now, just to give you a, 
a, a little buzz that uh, in communication about sustainable mines. Um, it's a it's a cloud uh, solution, so all our data is in the cloud, and all the database updates is updated are quickly rolled out and updated for everybody. Uh, if we put in uh, specific data, then it benefits the the, the, the community as well. Uh, so Aldine here shown as the editor in chief of a UK based uh, a magazine developed 3D. She has well, it doesn't get much better than this. He did a project, needed some data, basically got that in there within the week. And was very satisfied to be able to uh, support him, assist him, and, and he could work with uh, our offer. So very nice. So it's all about data. And it's very easy to request and add new data. When you go into our software, you see, of course, our library with materials, processes, and of live transportation. Um, but there's usually a need for uh, maybe uh, other public data. You can just request them through support. We prioritize our database development based on your feedback. Uh, but we can also generate custom impact factors, which can be generic, which can be uh, represented for your supply chain, which can actually be your data. Um, so if you have uh, requests, you don't see anything in our database uh, that you need or something that you, that you need, please send your request in and we can tell you whether it's either on our roadmap or whether we need to add it. And if it's important enough to you, we'll add it quite quickly for you. Now, a lot of companies are facing this question. How do we get that data? How do we operationalize that in our workflow? Um, and there are lots of um, um, uh, software solutions popping up here and there. So it's a pretty nascent field of software. Um, but the idea is that if you work around environmental design, it's usually not a one-size-fits-all tool kind of a problem because all your questions are different questions. Uh, and the tools uh, need to be tailored and tweaked based on experience in different products and projects and different sectors. So there's no one solution for everybody. And we feel that uh, we are unique at Sustainable Minds to help you with a screening LCA at the very early stages of, uh, of your environmental design. Um, um, and you have to recognize that it's um, not just data. It's not just a conversion of PLM, CAT, LCA, ERP. It's all of them together. We're actively associating with uh, vendors of that software uh, to streamline that and to make data exchange possible. It's also not just a tool problem because this is about you. This is a, about a cultural orientation. This is organizational. How do we uh, make this process work? So it's also a workflow problem. Problem. And when you look at the different design stages in the next slide, um, uh, the good providers are full LCA. A full LCA can only do uh, when you have every data piece together. It's just like uh, uh, PLM in the end, when it works uh, optimal for you, it means you know everything. And what we want to do at Sustainable Minds is when you don't know everything, still get a tool uh, that gives you directional results where you can base your decisions on in making things greener. And like I said, the greatest value is an early stage design. So start early. So using Sustainable Minds is about creating awareness, and it's about uh, education, and it's about taking action based on information that you get. Uh, and that's what we do. And that's our service offering. Uh, and, and, and I hope the examples that we're showing you are doing just that. So we provide uh, cloud-based uh, software, um, which is the eco-modeling and LCA here on the left of the screen. We have a learning center. The learning center you can use um, uh, uh, to help you and your team to develop eco-design strategies, understand LCA, and learn about sustainability. And we also have the community where people are sharing their experiences and stories. Now, when, when using sustainable mindset, now how do you define green or greener? Now, there is no such thing as a green product, um, but things can be greener than others. So it's all about comparisons. So that's when you look at our result views and you work with software. Uh, you see that um, uh, numbers show up. The numbers are green or red. Green is better. Red is worse. And everything is compared to what you see at the left of what we call a reference. Uh, you select which one of your concepts that you're redesigning is your reference. You select which one is final. Uh, and we'll present you with the environmental footprint that goes with that. Now, we also want to present you with something that is real time. So you can do this. This doesn't take too much time. Um, you know basic data about your product, 
once you've set up your reference, our experience is implementing new eco-design strategies goes fairly quickly. It's a matter of hours and not days. It's almost real time. Now, like I said, it's all about comparisons. On the left here, you see uh, uh, different toasters compared to each other, and we'll look at that project in a little bit. And then you see the numbers showing up there in green and red. On the right, you see a back-to-back -back comparison. I'm not expecting you to be able to read this, but the gist here is that um, the results are uh, uh, an addition of several parts and, and uh, process and materials that you put in, and they constitute the overall performance. Uh, and then when you compare them, you see the difference between the two, where the environment impact is coming from, uh, and where you see most impact, that's where you can start to improve uh, the environmental performance as a good entry point. And it can be uh, viewed through carbon footprint, overall performance on the process level, but also on a different life cycle stages level. So just to show you how other people are using our software and the companies that we are actively uh, engaging with, I'd like to show you a couple of examples of, of companies that are actually using our software. Um, so we're going to look at the a simple material project, uh, flooring and learning and definition project, uh, project about a shipping reel, reusable packaging and delivery, and then a concept phase for industrial equipment. And then we'll go online and we'll take a tour through the software. So this is a project you know, from a, a, a corporate project engineer. And he wanted to learn about the capability of our, our software so he could use it in product design you know, for all the different plumbing products that they are providing in you know, the market. So they wanted to look at different materials, different processes for a, a rather simple product. And the idea was that um, um, if we can use this in, in product development, if we can uh, use this uh, with information that we have, uh, then maybe we have a tool uh, that we can uh, use to gain insight uh, on how uh, we can make informed decisions uh, towards greener design. So they started experimenting with some materials and brass and silicon rubbers and, and, and uh, different uh, um, surface textures and finishings. Um, you see on the right, you see a bill of material, a simple one. Uh, you also see uh, an export. You can export all results from sustainable mines into spreadsheets and manipulate the data if you want this. These are some results views that they created. And they concluded that the software was useful in product development after they played with different materials, different material amounts, recognizing if they were selecting lower impact materials that maybe they would be less durable or had other performance uh, 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 so, uh, additions that they had to take into account so they modeled so lower service life uh, just to see where the trade-offs were and, and whether those decisions made sense. And they concluded that the software was useful for them in product development. The second project that I want to talk to you about is from a flooring company. And uh, flooring is uh, uh, a lot of material and then, uh, it gets used and a lot of that material gets landfill. And so how can we utilize the material investment uh, better uh, as a challenge for that industry and not create all that landfill waste? So this was a project done by Product Steward in Environmental Health and Safety. Um, and they wanted to do a screening LCA to identify and prioritize most promising green product innovations for their business. Um, so they did a, uh, um, uh, a screening LCA looking at lower impact materials, looking at the take back system, so taking the materials back after service life and then reutilizing them or recycling the content. And they also looked at the uh, carpet delivery as a service. So basically you would lease carpet for 5, 10, or 15 years and the company would take care of that and basically replace it and, and getting their own material back and that way getting a handle on the quality and technical performance of the recyclable material. So they found that um, uh, including recycled content gave them the most direct performance gain. And uh, you see it reflected on the right based on uh, some scenarios using different amounts of recycled content, different uh, amounts of primary virgin material, uh, looked at a few different plastics there. And, and they concluded uh, that uh, they wanted to use uh, some recycled content. Um, they made a decision to perform a feasibility study on the availability of recycled content from their own product, but also from different manufacturers. 
uh, from different sources for the same raw material. Um, then look at technical performance of overall product that they could make with that, but also customer appreciation. So they did a market survey because they wanted to make sure that they could sell this uh, as, a, as a product where people would still feel like, oh, it's a new product um, uh, and it's, it's a good carpet. I want to I want to pay this price and want to sell it. So very interesting. All these different disciplines that come together when looking at uh, greener design. It's never just a material engineer. It's never just a designer. It's never just a marketeer. It's, it's never just costing and pricing and sales. Uh, they all have to work together. And that's what makes um, uh, working in this field so interesting. Next project that I want to show you is a project from um, a Bressler Group, um, uh, a design company helping their clients uh, making better designs. And they made the decision a couple of years ago to always integrate uh, sustainable minds and environmental performance metrics in all their products. And some clients really latch on. For some clients, it's a nice add-on. Um, but this is a project uh, where they um, use sustainable minds in two ways. Um, during the early stage design, uh, they use it as a very uh, rough screening tool to look at, OK, so now we're going to design a reel. And a reel you use uh, to transport electrical wire. So these are pretty big things, pretty heavy things when the wire is on there. And they get shipped to clients, they use the wire, and then they get left with the reel and what they do with the reel. And typically, traditionally, they're made out of wood. And they had a suspicion, an idea that if they were to make it plastic, it would save a lot of uh, trees and, and material and was lighter. Um, and they combine it with, we want to be able to detach it and fold it so that the return freight would basically uh, be loaded onto freight that were already there and then require much extra transportation. Well, they found out um, that during the design process and when they really tweaked in that some of their preconceived notions about um, uh, the product, they had to throw out the window. And they, they came up with a product that combined both the, the plastic for the, for the wheels, the sides, because they needed the rigidity, uh, but then the plastic core, uh, where they could just detach it and, and, and reuse it, uh, gave them the best results. So it's actually combining two materials into a competitive solution that was most beneficial for the client. Uh, so they ended up making uh, uh, wood for the flanges and plastic for the core. Uh, looked at uh, manufacturing, they did uh, finite element modeling to reduce the amount of uh, material in the end when they uh, settled on the plastic and, and, and the wood uh, just to come up with a well-engineered, thoroughly thought through, through eco design process, uh, renewed environmental performance product. And it's a fantastic project. Uh, and we have a dedicated webinar on the Bristol Group in this project so if you're interested in how they work. It's much more about process um, and see how they integrate it. I, I, I uh, strongly recommend you check out that webinar and see when a new show and comes up uh, uh, in just a few weeks or months. Uh, you can utilize Sustainable Minds to uh, focus on specific life cycle phases. And this is a good example of a company that is uh, delivering widgets all over the world. So it's large uh, electronic uh, components. Uh, from a hardware manufacturer, you know, they ship worldwide. Uh, so some th sometimes they fly things out, sometimes they truck things out domestically. And this is from their um, delivery logistical unit. And they were uh, they're using a lot of um, uh, packaging that they landfill. And they were wondering whether a reusable packaging and how often that then should be reused or could be reused and was a sensible scenario. And for what markets that would that be a sensible scenario? Because if we fly it to China and we take it back, doesn't all that flying just add up too much and then we lose all the savings on the material? So we did a project with them where we compared uh, lots of different uh, scenarios uh, trying to define whether we reuse uh, of a more durable uh, packaging, uh, which was comparing uh, cardboard to uh, galvanized steel packaging. So basically a frame comparing to a box that you would toss out all the time which actually makes sense. And if it were to make sense, how often uh, could you reuse it or do you, did you need to reuse it to get to an optimal performance? So what you see on the right, uh, two result views. One of the views is showing you the total environmental performance, our single score indicator. 
uh, in reference to metal points, and you see that going from two times reuse of the metal packaging in a specific logistical scenario to two to ten times uh, gave them a huge saving. Anything over ten percent is significant, uh, and there's a real difference that you can use to make decisions. And you see that the difference here is much more than that. And if you look at the result at the bottom, if we focus on the carbon footprint, which is one of the ten environmental performance indicators in the overall impact, uh, you see that the difference is um, uh, quite uh, uh, negligible. So it's about the same. And uh, you see that the blocks are different in the stack column diagram bar. And, and what's happening here is that the investment in the material gets being trade off, traded off against all the extra transportation that needs to take place. So for the overall performance, uh, the better use of material outweighs uh, more transportation. But if you look at the carbon footprint, for this particular scenario, they quite level out. Um, so that's why we give you different result views. And depending on the goal you had for this project, uh, you had a successful result or not. And, and if you had to improve the carbon footprint, you would have to look at different scenarios to actually achieve and obtain that goal as well. Looking at a bit more complicated product, here's a, a project that we did with a uh, supplier uh, of industrial equipment. Um, yeah, I'm sure you can appreciate that a forklift is a pretty complicated product. Um, lots of different parts have to come together. Uh, so we worked with the design department uh, to try to solve, uh, 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 answer the question whether um, our software would be able to uh, look at this and for them uh, to allow them to include environmental performance measurements into their design uh, of something that was quite complex. Now, they looked at the different materials, looked at replacement rates, they looked at design for disassembly, looking at the making the product and then, and then servicing it and maintaining it. If so one part breaks, the machine is not done. Um, so all those scenarios came together and the result was that they uh, got a good insight into the major contributing processes and materials. Um, and while working with us, um, uh, we basically trained their designer uh, that, that is then, was then fit uh, and, and, and up to par to, to train people in the company itself. And we did that by web delivery actively working with the person doing a project review. Um, and for this specific product, uh, we developed custom impact factors. So using several services uh, to get to the solution where they said, yeah, we spent some more time on this because there was education involved. And then we actually developed some data for this client. And the client spent a bit more time on developing this. Um, but now they have a tool in a database that is fit for their purpose uh, and, and, and can use it just uh, um, well, not on a daily basis, but uh, for designing these complex products. Um, now, a good signal that they were happy and pleased with our services, that they uh, uh, we gained some customers uh, based on recommendations from them. Uh, so a really good project for us and a really good spin for us as well. Now, let's go into the software. So let's go online and show you how to set up a new project and then uh, look at a project that we already set up. So I'm going to my browser, go to www.sustainableminds.com. Uh, and um, you see your customer tab, their customer stories in there. Uh, you see an industry blog, uh, industry blog. Um, interesting to check it out. Um, if you wanted to read more up on the, the rest of the story and just about the process, there's a nice blog on here. Uh, and you can click on continue reading. It's a pretty long story there. Like I said, the video of their story will be online in, in just a couple uh, couple weeks. The customer stories about people who are actually using it, um, but you um, uh, can also just log on to the application, which is, of course, why we're here. If you log on to the application, you see a home step. We can start your new project and do the same online CLCA. That's the learning center, and there's a community. Um, if we go to the Learning Center, you see that it's uh, basically a textbook, lots of information in there, different chapters, and there's a chapter on uh, conducting a sustainable a chapter on methodology, you see different topics that are relevant. Um, one of the things that is, is in here, for example, is a, a chapter, uh, a section called Checks and Balances, 
when you're all done modeling and you think you're ready, then this is just a nice list of checks that you can uh, do to make sure that your, your, your product is complete uh, and verified and that you get the most out of sustainable mines. And, and so our learning center is chock full loaded with information like this. So once you do sign up, please have a look and, and go there uh, and see how you can utilize the most out of sustainable mines. Now, if we set up a new project, there's some information we need to fill out following the ISO guidelines. Uh, so let's just call it a new project. You can select your product category. Uh, can fill some more information about the project. Really helpful when you work in teams. I'm not going to do that today. You can fill out some information about the goal for your company, for the project. Uh, so more bookkeeping. We ask you to fill out information about what's included, what's excluded. There are sometimes perfectly good reasons to exclude some things from your assessment uh, because you're not want to focus on it or you know, you're making a coffee maker but you're not controlling how strong people like the coffee so you exclude the grinds. What you fill out here is supposed to help people who look at your project and at your results and especially if you work into teams that they understand what's actually being assessed. Um, that's what we call the functional unit. On a unit is the measurement of comparison. So when you start to model your references, everything has to fulfill the requirements and the functions that are specified in the functional unit. Uh, one hour of use is, of course, a very simple functional unit. Um, but you show a few more examples here. Uh, for example, if you look at the disposable paper cup here in blue, um, it could be the delivery of a eight ounce drink, and it has to be a cold drink. So you're talking about functional requirements. This is about an Xbox. Maybe you can talk about uh, how many hours of play or repaired in five years. And, and so thinking about this function unit is important because all the results will be expressed uh, you know, to this reference. Now, when time is relevant uh, in your assessment, so say there's a use consumable like electricity, we recommend using a, a function that includes time. Uh, and here, let's just select one and let's select one year of use. We're ready to start adding our first design. So let's uh, make a concept for today. We're going to assume that it's going to um, work for 10 hours. Save that. Now we get to our bill of materials. So here's where you build your actual product. Do you remember the slide where I said you fill out information on materials, you fill out information on uh, processes, transportation, end of life, and the use phase? That's what we're doing here. So here's where you fill out information. When you click on adding parts, you get to our material library. So you see material library, a pretty long list of chemicals, metals, plastics. So when we look at plastics, go to thermoplastics. Today we're going to look at a polyethylene terephthalate, so PET. We're going to use one pound of the material. You already see some numbers show up here. So this is the overall indicator, the middle points, and then you see the carbon footprint, the CO2 equivalents. Um, you see a description on what data is represented there in the numbers and where is it from. So we're trying to be transparent. You can fill out some, some comments where this was an assumption or estimate or calculation. You can add different parts, you can add a process. So we want to shape this plastic to your final products. We're going to shape it. Um, you get a dedicated list of uh, plastic shaping processes here. We want to look at the injection molding today. We want to do that for the full amount. So we're going to, one, I'm going to add one pound of injection molding. But you see several processes are available. We try to make these dedicated for different materials. So uh, make it as easy to use for you uh, without having to go through too much material engineering design. So now we see the PET, having about 1.38 kilograms of C2 associated with it already. Um, and we see that the injection molding adds about 0.8, so about a third of that. So processing responsible for a third of the overall carbon footprint. We're going to add transportation, different modes of the parts that you're putting together uh, during your assembly, but also the shipping of the assembled product to market. We're not going to do that today. You can use it to look at the use phase and add different um, consumables or water or power. And just look at some power use. We're going to make this a real green product. So let's look at uh, some wind power. 
I'm going to add one and 10 kilowatt hours uh, of electricity and add that to the bill of materials. Now to make it complete, we're going to have a look at the end of life scenario. Software recognizes the different materials, so we see the PET coming back. Everywhere where you see something in green, it means you can do something. So let's add an end of life method. Uh, we're going to uh, incinerate this one today. So we're going to add incineration. Usually you can choose between disposal, incineration, and recycling here. So that's composting or other dedicated processes. If there are ones that are missing, please send us a message through support and we'll add them uh, usually quite quickly so you can do your assessment. So we're ready to look at results. When you go to results, the main result view we have is the scorecard. You get to know your assessment. There's 0.8 millipoints that we're looking at here, and the greatest impacts lie in the material, PET. Impact category most effective is ecotoxicity, and it happens during the life cycle stage manufacturing. So when I look at the impacts by what I entered just now, I entered the material, proves to be most impactful, then injection molding, second one up, then the, the, uh, the use phase with electricity, third one up, and then the incineration. Um, so when we want to look at eco-design strategies, we may want to focus on the material itself because that will impact the material, maybe the processing and the end of life, not the use phase. We can look at carbon footprint to see whether we see the same result view here. Uh, we see, again, the material uh, incineration, no seconds, injection molding, uh, but the wind power we hardly ever see. So if you want to work on carbon footprint and electricity consumption is important, uh, maybe a renewable power source uh, may be the way to go. We can look at the impacts by life cycle stage. You know, we see end of life as sort as, as uh, you can see it, but it's not dominant. Just as the use phase, it's manufacturing. So now you have, now you have to look at manufacturing. And looking at the carbon footprint, you know, we expect a similar view. Uh, we see that the manufacturing, again, is most impactful. What we show you here is a breakdown of the um, uh, if we go to the uh, SBOM inputs, the top 10 of most impactful parts, which usually constitute over 89% of your overall performance, and we ordered them for you. And you can use this uh, basically for entry points for green design. Now, when we look at the real project, uh, let's go to the TOSA project and then see how a uh, fully elaborated project looks like in terms of how many reference concepts and, and how to compare those. So let's go to Toaster Project. You see several projects here. When you go to Finished Product, uh, you see an overview which combines the reference, this is the one where you start, the final concept, which is the one you selected when you were done for a specific reason, you selected this one, which doesn't necessarily have to be the lowest impact, which is featured here on the, at the bottom. When we look at the different concepts, you see that we uh, modeled a pretty long variety of ecogenic strategies. We used a reference house or toaster. We did design for disassembly. We looked at the use of secondary steel. We looked at the improved power consumption. You know, I like it for you. So let's scroll down. Uh, house of toaster with an alternative end of life, so not just landfill. Uh, just looking at some other materials, which were maybe low impact. Uh, different logistics for transportation, uh, etc. So, a pretty broad range of eco-design strategies here, focusing on pretty much everything in the life cycle. Now, if we look at the back-to-back -back comparison of the uh, house of toaster that we did with Select This Final, which was one that was designed for disassembly, if we look at a back-to-back -back comparison with the reference, and then we see the results here overall. Pretty big uh, performance improvement, 64% is quite dramatic. And what you see is a, 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 a design for disassembly, which means there was an inclusion of a take-back program, and it was so designed that we could disassemble it, and the products were made in such a way that components could be reused. So the biggest uh, impact on the left you see is related to steel. And so if we can start to reutilize um, uh, the steel itself and not send it to landfill, uh, then the impact will be much lower. And it's still the highest impact, but it's much lower in overall uh, than, than what you see here in, in the, the reference. So the, um, the payback in terms of um, uh, taking it back into this assembly uh, is, is pretty big for this example.
Now, looking at the COM footprint, you see a similar story to the packaging scenario. The COM footprint is, is, is virtually non uh, uh, affected by this. And that, that is caused by what's driving the carbon footprint. And it's driven by the electricity use. So we focus the design on the materials, so we're not attacking the electricity or making the product more efficient. Uh, they'll still be dominated. And, and, and then the differences in materials are quite modest. And if we want to improve the carbon footprint, then we would have to use look at efficient uh, energy efficiency, uh, different fuel sources maybe, et cetera, much more to use phase. Now you see that reflected in the impact for life cycle stage. Um, you see that the end of life and manufacturing most impactful for the overall indicator. And then we're really attacking them at the end of life and improving the manufacturing a little bit with this scenario. And the current footprint um, for the use phase, which was dominant, which we didn't address, uh, is still here and didn't change very much. Now, when you want to look at the, these results and you want to export them, there are different ways you can export them. One way to do that is click on printable view. And a graph will be generated that you can then just uh, export. Another way to uh, export results is uh, let me generate that for you. It should pop up in just a sec. And then you can copy and paste it into, for example, your presentation. Um, so there it is. And on the left, you see download as bomb. You can download all these results uh, for the different uh, toaster that you designed to the file text file, and if you open that, uh, I set up my computer at it, and I'll put my spreadsheet program Excel, and you have all the information available for all the different impact categories, for all the different parts, and you can manipulate this any way you want to. Uh, so there's a BOM import, and there's a results export, and you want to be transparent as well. So when you work with Sustainable Minds, uh, there are different subscriptions. We have single users and, and, and named multi-users. You can use it in the full department. Everything includes continuous software and content and data updates. Lots of uh, services that we can provide you with. Uh, always want to talk to you and see what you actually need. Uh, but we have several EcoDesign and LCA support offerings for you uh, to help you model, to look at the results, to make sure you use the, uh, the database right to augment your database, et cetera, et cetera. So like they have a data development program. We talked about it before. If you don't see the data you need, please touch base with us, and we'll see how we can get that in there as quickly as possible. Um, we're working with uh, 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 customers to really augment a huge database development process. So here's an, uh, an example of a Spartac Corporation servicing a lot of clients in the region as a technology innovation center. And they wanted to add a lot of different plastics and compounding and additives for the plastic processing. So we set up a pretty large data project with them and augmented the database really for, for their, their client base. And they're, they're using Sustainable Minds now for every product that they're doing, which is quite significant. If only to just learn about the numbers and, and how to value sustainability and then take it to the next level of what do we do with all this information. We develop private uh, custom data sets, uh, proprietary data sets that's of interest to you, and please reach out to us. We deliver several uh, different ways and several different types of training. The project review, the web-based training can come to your side to help you do an audit and benchmark program. One of the training sessions we sell the most is a web-based training where we go through an introduction on fundamentals of eco-design and LCA, and we model before that with you uh, a reference product that's actually your product. And then we do a redesign of your team, uh, very slim, very tailored, and very affordable, and a lot of fun. And, and this is the training that we, we sell the most, and we love doing it. So like El said, one of the other things he said, um, it's a very light term in user experience. There's a ton of learning resources, um, very heavy weight on data and potential benefit, it doesn't get much easier than this. It doesn't get much better than this. So very pleased to see those things. We have a few minutes left. Um, hopefully I addressed uh, all the topics that you wanted me to address. If there are questions, uh, please send them in, and let's see if there are some questions that uh, did come in. Um, 
There's a question here whether uh, we'll have some slides available for you. Uh, yeah, like I said, we are recording this webinar, so the, the webinar will be available in a few weeks. Uh, uh, completely integrated. If, if you want to have a selection of slides, please uh, fill out the questionnaire that you get sent afterwards, and then we'll touch base with you and we'll send you the slides. No problem. Let's look at some other questions. Um, I like the comparisons you show, but it's, it's all a bit new to us. How do I get results interpretation so I can explain it to my boss or coworkers? Yeah, so once you've gone through the process and send in all your data, uh, did the LCA, uh, the Sustainable Minds LCA, and you got to your numbers, and you're working on your design strategies, you know, how to translate that into a message to your boss or coworkers. Now, usually how we, how we do that is, is we work with you, uh, do some, some training, uh, do a project review, uh, together look at the results, see what are meaningful impacts and meaningful changes, and then we both feel comfortable about the results, uh, then we find a way how to communicate them, uh, looking at the, both the numbers and the ego design strategies that went into that. So that's something we can really help you with, uh, so not to worry about that. Another question, a very technical question, uh, how do you get uh, from uh, the results from several impact parameters like carbon footprint certification waste into a single score expressed in millipoints? Yeah, um, well the, the long answer is to look at our uh, methodology report, uh, but the trick is that we uh, normalize the results. Um, so we express the results uh, against the benchmark, and, 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 and in, in our case, we do against the, the overall performance of the U.S. economy. And then the results are expressed in, in middle points, and then we use a weighing uh, uh, from NREL on uh, how important different people value the different impacts and get to our overall performance. Now, the actual signs and numbers are included in the methodology report, so please have a look and, uh, and, and check that out. How is Sustainable Mind software different from other LCA software on the market? Uh, this is a pretty, pretty uh, uh, simple question with uh, uh, an answer that, if I want to summarize it, um, if you want to use CMAPR and Gabi, uh, they're very technical. It takes a while to get proficient in using that software. Uh, very good to do uh, for doing full LCA if you want to get to environmental product decorations. Um, if you want to use a, a life cycle assessment during your early stages of design, it makes much more sense to use Sustainable Minds. Yeah, it's much more intuitive, quick to learn, people work with it, are, are, are readily in a position to uh, get to making decisions based on our design software. And so it's more catered to uh, uh, people who don't want to become an LCA expert, but still want to leverage and utilize uh, the knowledge generated by the LCA community. Another question that came in is, if I want to understand the impact of one product, say our product, how do I go about comparing with other products? Assuming you mean products uh, manufactured by others. Um, well, in, in, in using Sustainable Minds into your design, seeing where your key performance indicators are, your unique sustainability performance metrics, uh, you would model comparing products just like you would do modeling a reiteration of your own product. You would have to set up a reference and then start to uh, compare the two or three or four or five different iterations there. Now, it's important to keep in mind that ISO has different requirements for uh, different uses of life cycle assessment. And when you want to make claims about comparing yourself to external parties, you have to go through a full LCA and have to go through type 3 labeling and certification and review. Uh, so Sustainable Minds is not intended to do that. Uh, but just like you're comparing different redesigns of your own product in Sustainable Minds, of 
course you can model uh, competing products uh, for internal learning purposes. That's not a problem. Now there are more questions. Uh, sorry we didn't have time to address all of them. We'll touch base with you afterwards. Um, at the moment, for now, I'd like to thank you for uh, your attention. We, we passed 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, I'd like to uh, thank you for your attendance. Um, we do this webcast uh, every week, same time. Like I said, we have different customer stories. Uh, sometimes we have dedicated web, web webinars uh, where clients of us are presenting how they're using sustainable minds. Um, so go ahead and sign up for a subscription. You can start with a trial. And uh, we look forward to hearing your experiences and maybe your story will be featured on one of our future webinars. Thank you for your attention and I'd uh, love to hear from you soon. You all have a great day. Bye-bye.